Welcome back, everybody. Ready for another deep dive. Absolutely. Always ready to jump into some fascinating topics. Well, today we're diving into something pretty captivating. It's the crossroads of politics and pop culture and how music can really influence elections. Definitely an interesting mix and always relevant, especially with everything going on right now. Exactly. You actually sent over some really interesting articles on celebrity endorsements in the upcoming election. And there's one pairing that I just I have to say I was not expecting this one. Um, yeah. It's a former U.S. president and, well, a rapper. OK, color me intrigued. Who are we talking about here? Well, you might remember Obama actually made headlines recently because he quoted Eminem at a Kamala Harris rally over in Michigan. Oh, yeah. I think I saw something about that. Wasn't it lose yourself? Pretty clever move, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just quote it. He actually, like, wrapped some of the lines. Wow. OK. He really went for it. I guess that's one way to connect with the younger voters. Yeah. I mean, it definitely got people talking. And it wasn't just a one-sided thing either. Eminem himself actually introduced Obama at the rally. Really? So it wasn't just Obama using Eminem's lyrics. It was like a mutual appreciation society going on there. Yeah, pretty much. Eminem was really praising Obama, you know, mm. and he was really emphasizing how important it is to, you know, actually get out there and vote. And that's a powerful message coming from someone like Eminem, especially given all the talk about voter suppression tactics and everything. And he didn't just say, you know, go vote. He actually encouraged people to speak their minds, you know, express their opinions and, you know, without being afraid of any kind of like retribution or anything like that. It definitely adds another layer to the whole thing, right? Like yeah. it's not just about voting. It's about participating in democracy without fear. It's a pretty strong statement. And, you know, this isn't actually Eminem's first time wading into the political scene either. Oh, really? I hadn't realized he was so politically active. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been involved for a while now. He endorsed Biden and Harris back in 2020, and he even dedicated a whole freestyle rap to Donald Trump at the BT Awards. Wow. OK, so this is not just a one off thing for him. This is a pattern of engagement. What do you think it says about him and his you know, views on politics? Well, I mean, it seems like he's pretty committed to this. You know, it's yeah. not just like a publicity stunt or anything. I feel like it reflects some, you know, genuine concerns he has about the direction the country is going in. I mean, that makes sense. It could be that his values have evolved, mm -hmm. or maybe he's just really concerned about some specific policies. Either way, it's clear he's not just dipping his toes in the water here. He's diving in head first. Yeah, and that consistency definitely gives his words a lot more weight, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It shows he's willing to put his name and his reputation on the line for what he believes in. And, you know, the article actually lists a whole bunch of other big names who are supporting Harris, too. We're talking like Taylor Swift, Oprah, Beyonce, Lizzo, Usher, Eva Longoria. I mean, the list goes on and on. Wow, that's quite the lineup. It seems like everyone's picking a side these days. It really does. And I mean, even on the other side, you've got people like Nikki Jam, Annual, and Hulk Hogan all backing Trump. It makes you wonder, though, right? Like, mm -hmm. Do these endorsements actually sway voters or are they just, you know, preaching to the choir? Right. Like if you already love Taylor Swift, chances are you're probably already on board with whoever she's endorsing. Right. But do you think her support would actually convince someone who's like totally on the other side of the political spectrum? I'd say that's pretty unlikely. And that's where things get a bit tricky, right? Because a celebrity endorsement could actually backfire. Oh, you mean like alienating some of their fans? Exactly. I mean, if someone's a diehard fan of, say, Beyonce, and they strongly disagree with her political views, that could actually push them away, potentially even harming the candidate she's trying to support. It's definitely a delicate balance. I guess celebrities have to be pretty careful about how they use their platform, especially when it comes to politics. Absolutely. It's a lot more complicated than just saying, hey, I like this candidate. You should, too. There's a lot to consider, both of the celebrity and the candidate. Definitely a lot at stake. But there's one endorsement that I have to say I found really compelling. It was Mark Anthony's support for Harris. His connection to the Latino community is undeniable. Oh, absolutely. Mark Anthony's a legend. And his message of unity, especially given his personal experiences during Trump's presidency, really resonates. You're talking about his criticism of the Hurricane Maria relief efforts, right? Exactly. That's not just abstract politics for him. It's about real life consequences that directly impacted his community. It's personal. And I think that's what makes his endorsement so powerful. It's not just a celebrity saying vote for this person. It's someone speaking from a place of lived experience. And that carries a lot of weight. And it ties into this whole concept of identity politics, right? Mm 
like how our political attitudes are shaped by our social group memberships, whether it's race, ethnicity, gender, religion, whatever. So Mark Anthony's message is really tapping into the shared experiences and concerns of the Latino community, making it much more impactful than, say, just a generic endorsement from a celebrity. Exactly. It's about understanding the specific needs and concerns of different communities and addressing them in a way that resonates with their lived experiences. So we've got Obama dropping Eminem verses, yeah. a whole star-studded lineup of endorsements, and Mark Anthony speaking directly to the heart of a specific community. This is getting pretty complex, wouldn't you say? It definitely highlights how intertwined music and politics have become. It's not just about entertainment anymore. It's about shaping narratives, influencing opinions, and ultimately impacting elections. You know, it makes me think about the broader role of music itself in shaping political narratives, like Obama rapping and Eminem's freestyles. Those are just the tip of the iceberg, right? <laughs> music has this long history of being a tool for protest, social commentary, and just, you know, political activism in general. Oh, absolutely. Think about the role of folk music during the civil rights movement or how punk rock challenged the establishment. Music has always provided a platform for dissent and a voice for those who feel marginalized or unheard. It's like music gives them a way to express their frustrations, their hopes, their demands, all through a medium that transcends language and cultural barriers. Exactly. And with the rise of social media and streaming platforms, the reach and influence of music have just exploded. Artists can connect with their audiences, share their political views, and even mobilize their fan bases in ways that were unimaginable just a few decades ago. It's incredible how much power music has, but it also raises some questions, doesn't it? Like, does this increased access and influence actually translate into real world political change? Does it empower citizens and encourage democratic participation? Or does it just create echo chambers and further polarize society? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I think the impact of music and politics is complex and multifaceted. It can be a force for good, absolutely, but it can also be used to manipulate and divide. The key, I think, is to be aware of its influence, understand its potential impact, and engage with it critically. Being a mindful listener, I like that. Don't just passively absorb the music. Think about its message, its purpose, and its potential influence. Exactly, because mm -hmm. whether we realize it or not, music is shaping our political landscape in yeah. profound ways. Yeah, it really does make you think, doesn't it? I mean, music's got this undeniable power in politics, but like, is it really pushing for genuine change or is it just a tool for, I don't know, manipulation? That's what I keep coming back to. We've been talking about artists using their platforms for, you know, activism. But what about when it's the other way around? What about when politicians use music to try and sway voters. Oh, it happens all the time. Just think about all those campaign theme songs you hear, or even the music playing at rallies. Those choices are definitely not accidental. You're right, like at rallies, there's always this like incredibly upbeat music. I swear it's always high energy stuff. Exactly, it's totally intentional. It's about creating this sense of unity. You know, like everyone's there for the same reason and feeling the same energy, but it goes deeper than just the mood. It's the lyrics too. Oh, you mean like how they pick songs that kind of like subtly echo the message of the campaign. Exactly. Campaign strategists are really good at picking songs where the lyrics subtly like reinforce their message. Sometimes they even use lyrics to like take a jab at their opponents. Wow, it's like they're trying to slip the message past our defenses and straight into our brains. Kind of, yeah. It's all about creating this emotional connection that bypasses the whole rational part of our thinking. Do you think it works? I mean, are we really that easily swayed by a catchy tune? It's definitely effective, and we see it in political ads all the time, too. Certain songs, like patriotic anthems, get used in feel-good campaigns, while others, maybe something more somber, get used for attack ads. It's so subtle, though. It makes you wonder how ethical it is. Like, are we being manipulated without even realizing it? That's a valid question, for sure. I think it just comes down to being aware of it. If we know these tactics are being used, we can engage with them critically, right? So instead of just letting the music wash over us, we should be asking ourselves, okay, is this real, genuine inspiration or is it just a trick to play on my emotions? That's the idea. Don't just be swept away by the music. Think about what's behind it. It's like a musical arms race. It's both sides going head to head, but instead of weapons, they're using soundtracks to try and win us over. And this whole sonic battle is getting even more complex with, you know, all the technology we have today. Think about all those personalized playlists we listen to. It's not just about our taste in music. It's about algorithms and data. Oh, so you're saying those algorithms can be influenced to push certain political agendas? It's possible. 
Imagine a campaign that targets voters with playlists specifically designed to reinforce their message or even sway undecided voters. That's kind of terrifying, actually. It's like we're being trapped in a musical echo chamber where all we hear is music that aligns with a specific viewpoint. It's definitely something to think about. We should be more aware of how these algorithms are shaping our online experiences and not just when it comes to music. You mentioned something earlier called sonic branding. Can you explain what that is and how it fits into all of this? So sonic branding is basically using sound to create a unique identity for a brand, a product, or in this case, even a political candidate. So like a musical signature. Yeah, exactly. A good example is Hail to the Chief. It's instantly recognizable and evokes a specific feeling, right? It's like a musical shortcut to an idea or an emotion. That's it. And that association can be incredibly powerful, especially when you hear it over and over again at rallies, in ads, or whenever the president's on TV. It gets ingrained in our minds and shapes how we see that candidate. Okay, so next time I hear a powerful, inspiring anthem at a rally, I'm going to be thinking, is this genuine or is this sonic branding at work? That's a smart approach. Being aware of these tactics is the first step to making sure you're not being swayed unconsciously. But, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. We've been focusing on the manipulation side, but music can be a powerful force for good, too. You're right. We shouldn't forget about that. Think about protest songs and the impact they've had on historical movements, everything from the fight for civil rights to anti-war demonstrations. Exactly. Music gives people a voice, especially those who feel like they don't have one. It helps people share their stories, connect with others who are feeling the same way, and it breaks down all those barriers that divide us. And doesn't have to be about these grand political statements either. Music plays such a huge role in our daily lives, helping us deal with stress, process our emotions, you know, even just finding moments of joy. Absolutely. Music is a source of comfort, inspiration. It connects us. And while we should definitely be critical of how it gets used in politics, we shouldn't forget that it also has this amazing power to heal and inspire and bring people together. It's definitely a double-edged sword. Music can be used for good or for bad, and it's up to us to be aware of that and to make sure we're using it responsibly. Speaking of different parts of the world, we've been talking a lot about the U.S. election, but I'm curious, how does this whole interplay between music and politics play out on a global scale? It's definitely a global phenomenon, but the specifics they can vary a lot depending on the political and cultural context. Mm -hmm. In many countries, celebrities are actually really deeply involved in political campaigns, advocating for social change, and some even run for office themselves. Wow, really? Do you have any examples? I'm having a hard time imagining that. Oh, yeah, definitely. In Brazil, for example, you had the musician Gilberto Gil. He was the minister of culture under President Lula da Silva. And then in Ukraine, you have Volodymyr Zelensky. He was a comedian before he became president. And his popularity as an entertainer definitely helped him get elected. That's fascinating. It's like the lines between entertainment and politics are blurring everywhere, not just in the U.S. It's a global trend, and it really reflects the growing influence of pop culture on society in general. But the impact and, you know, what it means for each country can be very different. In some places, celebrity endorsements might be seen as harmless, just part of the entertainment. Mm. But in others, they could be viewed as a threat to democracy. And we can't forget that freedom of expression and the role of the media, those aren't the same everywhere either. That's right. In some countries, you have celebrities who face censorship or even persecution just for speaking their minds about politics. It definitely makes you appreciate the freedoms we have here, even though things can get pretty messy and complicated sometimes. It's a good reminder to not take those freedoms for granted and to support artists and activists around the world who are fighting for their right to express themselves and to push for democratic values. Absolutely. Their voices are so important. But let's bring it back to the music itself for a second. We've talked about endorsements and rallies, but I'm curious about those more subtle ways that music can be used for political persuasion. Oh, there's a whole other layer of musical manipulation happening beneath the surface. For example, have you ever noticed how certain songs get chosen for political ads? to evoke specific feelings. Now that you mention it, yeah, it's like upbeat patriotic anthems for those feel-good campaigns, and then you have the more somber music for attack ads. It's like they're trying to mess with our minds. You got it. And it's not just about the genre or the mood. The lyrics play a big role, too. Campaign strategists are super careful about picking songs with lyrics that either support their message or take a dig at their opponent. It's subliminal messaging through music. 
It's pretty sneaky if you ask me, but I have to admit, it's pretty clever too. The whole goal is to connect with voters on an emotional level, you know, to bypass that rational part of their brain. And they don't just do it in ads, they do it at rallies too. Yeah, that makes sense. The music they play at rallies is always so high energy, it's like they're trying to pump up the crowd, get them excited and fired up. Exactly. It's all about creating a sense of unity and purpose, making people feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. It's like a giant concert, but for a political cause. And that's the point, to blur the lines between entertainment and politics and to create this excitement and engagement that goes beyond just logic and reasoning. So it's not just about celebrities endorsing candidates. It's about using music itself as a way to persuade people. Exactly. Music has this incredible power to tap into our emotions, shape our perceptions, and influence how we act. And when it's in the hands of a skilled political strategist, it can be a pretty powerful weapon. So next time I hear a catchy song at a rally or in a political ad, I'm going to be thinking twice about it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Always ask yourself, how is this music trying to manipulate me? What kind of feelings is it trying to evoke? And the most important question, am I letting this music cloud my judgment? Be critical. Be aware. And don't let music sway you without your consent. Remember, your ability to think for yourself is your best defense against manipulation. It really is incredible how music can sneak up on us and have this huge influence even when we don't even realize it. So we've been talking about how campaigns use music strategically, but what about the impact on just like regular people? Does music actually change how people vote? It's a tough question to answer definitively, but research suggests it can definitely play a role in shaping our political views and ultimately how we vote. There have actually been studies showing that music with pro-social lyrics like songs about unity and helping others can actually make people more empathetic and altruistic. So like, if someone listens to a song about compassion and understanding, they might be more open to voting for a candidate who emphasizes those values. Exactly. It's like mm. priming our emotional state to be more receptive to certain ideas. You know, think about those powerful songs they play at rallies. They're not just there for entertainment. They're creating a sense of shared purpose and euphoria, which helps to forge a strong connection between the candidate and the audience. Yeah, it's almost like music creates this shared experience, an emotional one, that words just can't really replicate. That's a great way to put it. And that connection, that feeling, it can be a powerful motivator. It can influence who people vote for and even how they talk about politics with others. So even though we need to watch out for manipulation, we can't ignore music's power to like really inspire people and get them moving on important issues. I totally agree. Music has this incredible ability to be a catalyst for change. It gives a voice to those who are often overlooked and can inspire people to take action together. Think about all the protest songs throughout history. They've given strength and unity to so many movements, like the fight for civil rights, peace and equality. Yeah, and it's not just a thing of the past either. Today, we see artists speaking out against injustice, raising awareness about things like climate change, and encouraging people to participate in the political process. They're using their platform and their music to make a difference. Music has this power to connect us, to move us, and to inspire us to make the world a better place. It can be used for good or for bad, and it's up to us to be aware of its influence and use it wisely. That's a really powerful point. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of music and politics, what's the one thing you really want our listeners to take away from this conversation? I think the most important thing is to really listen to music in a political context. Don't just let it wash over you. Ask yourself what emotions it's trying to make you feel and what message it's trying to get across. And most importantly, are you letting it sway your opinions without even realizing it? So be critical, be curious, and don't be afraid to question why you're hearing that particular music in that particular setting. Exactly. Music can be amazing for bringing people together and inspiring them, but it can also be used to manipulate and divide. By being aware of its potential, we can make sure it's being used for good and that it helps create a more just and harmonious world. This has been such an insightful conversation. Thank you so much for taking us on this deep dive. It's really opened my eyes to how music is shaping our political world. The pleasure was all mine. And to everyone listening, remember, music is incredibly powerful. Listen closely, think critically, and use your own voice to help create the world you want to see. Couldn't have said it better myself. We encourage all of you to keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep listening. Until next time, stay curious and stay engaged.